What you're looking at is my latest test bike, guys. It's a brand new Cervelo Espero. And for the next few weeks, I'll be riding this bike on all my local trails here in the Cotswolds. There will be a full review, of course. Make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already by clicking that red button down below so you don't miss that review. But until then, here's a quick first impression, some details that stand out, some things I like about it, and some things I'm not so keen on. But first, it's worth remembering where Cervelo had come from to get to the point of launching their first dedicated gravel bike. So Cervelo is a Canadian company renowned for making some of the best high-end race-focused bikes, aero bikes, lightweight carbon bikes. There's no kids' bikes, no entry-level bikes. It's all about race-winning bikes. They sponsored many pro teams in the past, and they still do. They've won the Tour de France as well. So when it came to producing their first gravel bike, they wanted to produce a bike for speed and speed and speed and nothing else but speed. It's all about going fast for winning races. So gravel bikes are still in their early days and we're seeing a bit of a split at the moment. At one end, you've got bike packing, load lugging, ultra versatile, ultra capable bikes for going around the world, doing TCR style events or any micro adventure you want to do. And at the other end, we've got a bike designed for speed, uh, for performance, for winning races like Dirty Cancer, one of the events that spawned this whole gravel movement that's spreading around the world at a rapid rate. So when it came to producing their first gravel bike, they naturally brought all their expertise in designing fast bikes to a gravel bike designed for going at speed over any terrain. Whether road, gravel, dirt, you name it, this bike is designed for going fast over everything. Before I start boring you all the details, I've got to talk about the looks of the bike. I think it looks fantastic. It looks very much like a Cervelo road bike, but just beefed up with bigger tyres. We've got nice rounded tube profiles. All tube profiles have been optimised for stiffness and compliance and aerodynamics as well. We've got full internal K routing, so it's very nice and neat. Disc brakes, of course, through axles, front and rear. We've got now a familiar dropped rear stays, a bit of extra comfort and a stiffer rear triangle. Chain stays have been dropped as well. You can see how big profile they are for maximum power transfer and the down tube as well is all nice and beefed up. The colour, when I first saw it on the press release, I wasn't so sure. But now I've had it for a few days, it's really starting to grow on me. In the sunlight, as you can see, it's starting to glitter, got a nice uh, speckle in the paint job. And it's a very outdoorsy, countryside, landscapey, off-roady colour. So yeah, I like it. It does clash a bit with the tan sidewall. So personally, I'd probably go for an all black tyre. I like the understated graphics and I love the chevrons on the back of the seat tube and the inside of the fork there as well. And it's a really smart looking bike. We start our inspection at the front of the bike, in particular the dropout, because this bike has a fairly unique trick up its sleeve, adjustable geometry. Now, adjustable geometry is not something we've seen much on drop by road bikes. Over in the mountain bike world, it's very common on full suspension bikes, where adjusting the geometry allows the rider to adjust the bike to suit their riding style and the terrain they're riding on, so slacker or steeper to suit their requirements. On drop bar road bikes, we haven't seen much of it, but with gravel bikes now trying to accommodate a wide variety of tire sizes and wheel sizes, we're seeing a few manufacturers play around with fork offset to adapt the handling across the wide spectrum of wheel sizes and tire sizes that gravel riders are now using. So they have something called trail mixer, which is basically a two position fork offset. So there are two positions, forward and rearward, with a five millimeter difference between the two. Now the idea is basically to maintain the same trail regardless of the wheel size and the tire size on the bike. Cervelo have designed the bike around a 62 millimeter trail. So when you change down to a 30 mil slick tire perhaps, or a solid cross tire, or go to a 650B with a wire tire, you adjust the fork offset to maintain the same trail. So you basically have the same trail regardless of the tire size and the wheel size. If you're wondering, Dave, what the hell are you talking about with trail? Don't worry, you're probably not alone. Trail isn't something that consumers usually worry about. It's more something for designers when they're producing a bike to worry about in terms of the handling they want the bike to have, whether it's slow and stable or fast and twitchy. So the trail is related to the offset of the fork and the head angle. And trail is basically the contact patch of a tire trailing behind an imaginary line drawn through a steering axis. If you draw a line through the head tube and down to where it hits the ground. That distance there is a trail and you can choose the handling you want for a bike with the trail. 
Now most bikes have a predetermined trail and most road bikes fall within a small range. It does have an impact on the handling. It's not a huge change, but it is something that Cervelo have decided they want to focus on. This is a key USP of the bike and it helps to mitigate the changes introduced when going from different wheel sizes and tire sizes. So it's a key feature on the Espero and I can't wait to see how it actually works in practice. As well as the trail mixer at the front for adjusting the offset and the trail of the bike, you also have a geometry that's loosely based on the company's R series road bikes. But one important change, You've got a longer front center designed around a shorter stem. That's a bit of a mountain bike influence there, designed to give you the same reach you get from a regular road bike or gravel bike, but a shorter stem for more nimble handling and the front center just gives you that reach as I mentioned earlier. We've seen a few other companies do it, White, Merida, etc., have been going down this route of longer front center and a shorter stem. So if you're looking at the bike thing, that stem's really short, I need to put a longer one on. Don't design around a shorter stem to give you the fit you need, but give you that stability and the fast handling as well. So that's a, an interesting detail. You've also got very short rear stays as well to keep the handling nice and nimble through the trees and quite a low bottom bracket and it all looks good for producing a fast, stable, uh, easy to ride gravel bike. The new Aspera is fairly well packed with details, a few of which I'll point out now. So you've got a full internal cable routing with a port on a down tube, compatible with all group sets on the market. Got a nice bash guard on the down tube to protect the carbon frame from rocks flying up from the front wheel, so you're not gonna potentially damage it if you're riding down rocky terrain. You've got three bottle cage mounts, with two positions on the down tube, the lower one more aero, and the higher one allows you to fit a seat tube bottle cage. I love the external seat clamp. Nice and simple, it's not gonna fail you like a internal seat clamp might do. You can also fit a dropper seat post if you're getting into some rad gnarly terrain you need a dropper seat post to give you a bit more freedom. You've got through axles, 12 mm through axles front and rear with flat mount disc brakes. There is one detail lacking on this bike, and that is there are no mudguard mounts. Now, gravel bikes are great because they are versatile. You use them for doing dirty cancer and grinduro and other cool gravel events, but equally, you can use them for winter training with mudguards, slick tyres, two bikes in one if you want. So that's a bit of an omission from Cervelo. I get that it's a race bike designed for speed, but here in the UK, we don't have many gravel race events. They need to have a wider scope for users to adjust the bike to their preferences, and that's a bit of an oversight, really. Especially when you've got all this clearance, plenty of space for my guard, so a shame not to have that there. So a very common feature on gravel bikes these days are two bolts on a top tube for fitting a bento box, an extra bag for fuel and bits and bobs. But if you're not using a bag, you have two ugly bolts in proud of the top tube. So Cervelo, quite neatly, have basically hidden them underneath this flap. So you've got two threads there for fitting your bento box. You're not using them, got a little plastic cover, fit in place. That I do like, nice and smooth. Good work, Cervelo, I like that. So lucky me, the bike I'll be riding for the next few weeks is the range topping model, costing 5,400 pounds. Get a SRAM Force ETAP access group set, wireless shifting and hydraulic disc brakes, of course, with a single ring at the front. Got nice new DT Swiss carbon aero gravel wheels, fitted with Donnelly tires, 40 mil wide, but more like a 42 on these wide profile DT Swiss wheels. Got Eastern finishing kit, so an inline seat post, aluminium, aluminium stem, and a flared drop handlebar, nice cushy bar tape, and a stubby Pro Logo saddle. So it's pretty sensible spec, and it's reasonably priced compared to some of the rivals in this sector. You can buy a frame set for £2,300, or you can get a complete bike with SRAM Apex One for, I think it's £2,600, maybe £2,700, which seems like a pretty good price when you're getting all the group sets, the wheels and the finishing kit for a few hundred pounds more than a frame set costs on its own. So that's a good looking bike. But this bike will be riding for the next few weeks and I can't wait to find out how it performs. And I will give you an update here on our YouTube channel with a full review as I've been doing with other bikes. So make sure you hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss it. If you have any questions about this bike, any questions about the spec and the frame, if you're confused about trail, you want a bigger explanation, let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. But until then, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again next time.